Hello, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Today is a tremendous pleasure to have uh, uh, Strive by Syria with us. Uh, Strive is uh, a chairman of Econet and Liquid and a lot of companies working on the digital space. He is a philanthropist. He is also someone who has been very involved in the fight against coronavirus in Africa. Actually, he has been tasked by a lot of African leaders to coordinate the work of the private sector to support uh, vaccine production in Africa. But here, today in London, we are with Strive to discuss our business relation because we have uh, uh, been very honored to work with this company and today to announce that uh, we have uh, committed close to $250 million to support liquid work in Africa. What is it about? is about transforming African economies. It's more than just uh, financial resources that we are putting and making available to, to Liquid and Econet. It's more about transforming African economies to make sure that people have access to broadband and make sure that nobody is left behind. So today we have Strive here. He will tell us how uh, these relations that put together, his vision of digital transformation in Africa and how IFC and Liquid and Econet are partnering. Strive. Well, first of all, welcome to London and to COP26. It's been great to see you guys in the city. Uh, but, you know, and of course, we also welcome you as a, a shareholder uh, after this uh, historic investment of almost $250 million, which we have received from you this year. We have a long relationship with IFC, as you know, because we both are mandated to help develop the, Af uh, the African continent. And so we are, we are very excited about this investment. Thank you for, me, for the support and the confidence in us. This is impressive. I'm a member of the Broadband Commission, and uh, we discussed many times, actually, this idea of, co of collaborating together also came from uh, the objective that was set to really provide uh, broadband access to Africans. And you have been one of the, the, uh, the person I've been saying for a long time, is not a luxury good. Yeah. It's not a luxury good. And if you want to make Africa part of the world economy, we need digital. Can you elaborate well, on that? Yes, of course. You know, for us to really become part of the mainstream digital global economy. We have to provide the infrastructure. You know, we, we can't talk our way to it. We have to do it. And what we've done as Liquid is to build the, the ground zero, the base infrastructure. We have built a fiber optic network that runs now through more than 30 African countries, 100,000 kilometers. It is one of the largest terrestrial fiber networks in the whole world. It crosses from east to west, north to south. We've completed Cape Town to Cairo. We've done Port Sudan to Dakar. We have fiber capacity running through these countries. And this fiber infrastructure allows the building of things like your mobile networks. For your mobile networks to operate, they run off our digital backbone. So our customers are your day-to-day -day mobile operators, MTN, Vodacom, Orange, all these companies, we are their backbone. But we are also providing the backbone for the development of e-commerce. The internet use for e-commerce for health, for education. So we're connecting schools, universities, and with the support that we're now getting from the IFC as long-term patient capital, we're now able to go into areas where we would not normally go as a purely commercial player. We're beginning now to go into deep rural areas, provide connectivity for schools, hospitals, and make it possible really for our young people to come onto the digital economy more cheaply. So creating a more cost-effective digital infrastructure. Strive, 
A lot of people know you for uh, fiber optic, the 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic that you, you built in Africa. But they don't know your business on data center. Yeah. And you told me actually, Mokhtar, this is where I'm going and this is what <laughs> I'm doing. So tell us more about data center. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes, uh, you know, some of the silent parts of our business, our data center business really uh, began in South Africa where these big tech companies from the United States uh, started to come to us to say we would like to have infrastructure to store data on the ground in Africa. Some of the biggest tech companies started to request this. I said, okay, we'll build for you. So we built data, you know, they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, so today we operate data centers um, across the entire region. We, we are in Southern Africa, we are in East Africa. We just completed the biggest data center in Nigeria. And now with the support that you have given us, almost all the support that you have given us, and as part of a capital raise we have done, we're now building data centers in all the major economies. So, and really we intend to build up to 25 what we call hyperscale data centers, which are the really the big ones uh, in all the major cities of Africa. So it's a, it's a really, it's a major initiative for us. Thrive, we, you also were telling me about these two big cables that are being the lay offshore of South Africa, which might bring it uh, close to 300 terabyte of additional uh, data. So capacity will not be a problem anymore in the continent in the next uh, uh, couple of years. But you're talking about uh, making internet accessible to the consumer at a much lower price. What are your ideas about it? Of course, you know, all our fiber that we build across Africa, Mokta, as you look at a web of fiber infrastructure connecting every African country, doesn't mean anything if we're not connected to the global economy. So our terrestrial fiber network interconnects to undersea cables. And every undersea cable that goes around Africa is linked to us. We are either shareholders or we are the largest capacity buyers. So we are working now closely with Facebook and Google for the introduction of two cables, which will begin to land off the West African coast early next year coming into the major cities like Dakar, uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Ab Abidjan, Accra, Lagos, all the way down to Cape Town. And then a year later, a new cable will come through from Facebook, which will go right around the continent. And again, we are the landing party for those cables to take them into the rest of Africa. Now, our partners, such as Facebook and Google, their business model requires low-cost data. It's not anymore about data, selling data as a business, but selling services. We want people not to make money on data, but to make money on the services that run off data. So we are working now to lower the cost of data in an African uh, city or home uh, to by 85% or more. So this is a major initiative we are developing, particularly with Google. Uh, we've already launched in, Cape, in, in Kenya, and we intend to scale from next year until every major city or town in Africa, you can sit down and download your data, watch your soccer match without uh, having to borrow money from the bank to do it. <laughs> this is fantastic. Actually, we are in London. I know that a lot of uh, Africans are a big fan of Premier League leagues, so they will be watching it. Uh, so, but there's something is, is quite interesting also that you said in our earlier conversation, is that uh, coming from COP26 is for you very important to make sure that uh, all those data centers who are very uh, big uh, consumer of energy are not uh, uh, contributing to the increase in, in the world temperature. So you want it to be green. 
Uh, what model did you develop to have a green data center? It's not uh, obvious, but tell us how did you do it? Well, you know, um, Mark Dye, you know that data centers are massive power consumption. Our data centers in South Africa are already over 50 megawatts, and we're taking that to 100 megawatts in the next three to four years. That's, that's the power consumption of some countries or towns. So these data centers, they take a lot of power. So we had to be careful from day one that we don't end up uh, powering them with fossil fuels. So we have built our own uh, power systems for data centers. We use solar panels and we work with Tesla in the United States as our partner to provide the battery systems. So these are these are net zero data centers. They do not use fossil fuel uh, or even in countries where we build them, even we also insist on access to things like hydropower to ensure that uh, they do not contribute to uh, the global uh, climate change problems that we're all facing. This is fantastic because in the past, <coughs> until recently, when people were talking about data center, they were thinking about Nordic countries because it was cooler and there the consumption of energy was l lower. And actually a lot of uh, companies have in invested there. So what you're telling us now is that there is, this is possible to run a data center in Africa and not to pollute the, the atmosphere and to, have, uh, to do it cleanly. This is a ma major contribution and I hope that uh, investors who are thinking about data center localization we now think about Africa as also a place where you can put data center and not impact environment as we. You have done a lot in this area, but what if you were to set an agenda for uh, policy makers to uh, take uh, what you are doing again to the next level, what would be the two, three issues that needs to be tackled? You know, we, we need to tackle the skills gap. That, that is really number one. You know, we got to make sure that our young people are fully equipped for the future. Digital skills, AI, you know, you and I were discussing earlier training uh, young people in AI. We need African engineers. We need to have young people with PhDs. AI is now, it's arrived. Uh, so we got to deal with the digital skills gap. We've got to deal with the energy uh, deficit. The technology too has arrived. There is really no reason today why our villages and our towns don't have electricity. This is a challenge we can address using renewable solar batteries over the next 10 years that no one in Africa does not have electricity. And I'm not talking anymore about little lamps and lights. Mm -hmm. That was for another generation. No, we're talking here about enough electricity to watch television, to run uh, cottage industries, all sorts of activities, because we need economic activity. We need to create jobs. So at the heart of everything we do is to create jobs and to spur entrepreneurship, because we are not going to create jobs without changing the entrepreneurial culture and drive of our young people. We don't need people to be crossing the Sahara and the Mediterranean. Africa offers extraordinary opportunities, but we've got to train, skill up our people, educate our young people, and the technologies are there. And this is why we're building this kind of infrastructure together, so that they have a platform to stand on. So hearing that, there's a lot of optimism that I share. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, uh, in spite of uh, some bumps on the road, uh, Africa is going the right direction and there is a lot to, to, be, to be done. And done in an uh, area which are uh, very uh, promising for the future of very high growth and digital is one of them. Just the last word for me, IFC is not about just uh, uh, making money and, and having a profitable investment is about impact. 
it matters for us, it's essential for us to impact people's life, to make sure that our investment in companies is creating jobs, is transforming the reality, is allowing people to access services at a much cheaper price. So IFC is about impact, impact, impact. That's what I want to leave you with. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs>